Awesome, thank you so much. All right, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Mary Gu and I am the program's lead with the Open Library. I'm here today to talk to you about licensing for your VLS project. On today's call is also Lafia from our amazing comms team who is helping support the webinar. We have Rosie from PMO who is also here to provide support. You'll have seen them in the chat. And we also have Ridma Bhatia who is another programs lead with the Open Library. She is the main support for the integrating OER program that some of you may already know about. Um, so these lovely folks are here to help me keep uh, top of chat and answer questions and facilitate the process of the webinar. Just so you know, uh, we will have a, a full Q&A session at the end of the session today. And if you have any questions, drop it in the chat. I'll try and keep an eye on it in between sections uh, so we can talk about it uh, as it comes up. So before we get started today, I want to take a moment and acknowledge the land that we are on. So the offices of eCampus Ontario, which are located in downtown Toronto, are within the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, and the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. I am working from home today, and I am also located on these same lands. We want to acknowledge and thank the diverse Indigenous peoples whose footsteps have currently do and will continue to mark this territory. We also ask you to take a moment to consider the character, caretakers of the lands and waters that you are on. If you feel comfortable, please do consider sharing it in the chat uh, right now. And we also have a link to native-land.ca, which is an excellent resource for considering exploring the, like, the diverse lands that we are all situated on. Gonna give it a second. Thanks folks for taking the time to reflect. So for the agenda today, I'm going to start with a very, very brief overview of the VLS as I'm sure you're all familiar. It helps us situate and consider the implications of what we're doing here today. Then I'm gonna jump into an overview, a sort of foundation setting on copyright, intellectual property and licensing. That way we're all on the same page before we dive into discussing your VLS related responsibilities and requirements. And then we'll dive into a section about the licensing options that are available to you, a very quick summary, and then we'll have time for questions. As mentioned, I'll check in at the end of each section to see if there's any questions in the chat as well. So, at eCampus Ontario, we develop platforms, programs, frameworks, services, all in support of sector-wide challenges. We provide the necessary learner and educator supports in order to foster rich, humanized, inclusive, and successful educational experiences within the realm of virtual learning, which is what brings us all here. So our key programs are many, and of course, everyone's here has to be familiar with the virtual learning strategy and probably the open library at this point. But as well, we have a lot of different programming areas supporting different aspects of the educational sector, such as CATFO, which supports the microphone student experiential learning. Uh, we have adaptive learning, which is furthering research and, um, and sort of relationships with what adaptive learning can do in um, education. We also have Ontario Exchange, a micro credential, uh, sorry, a micro and a micro credential portals as well. So you see that there's a lot of different services and programs available. We encourage you to explore further on eCampusOntario.ca for any that you are curious about. Um, and of course, if you want an, a specific link to any of these things, let us know. We can drop in a chat later on. So before we dive into the main content, let's take, on, take a second to reflect on the three pillars of the virtual learning strategy that guides a lot of our work. So the virtual learning strategy is framework is built on these three pillars of being in the future, being a lifelong learner and being a global leader. And the projects funded through VLS all aim to expand Ontario's ed, uh, education sectors like digital capacity in terms of resources and programs and practices. And through that first round of funding, we have definitely started to see that wide ranging impact. I can definitely say so from the Open Library's perspective. And so of course you're all here because you see the value of participating in that. And let's dive into today's content. I'm just gonna check the chat real quick. Make sure there is nothing I am missing. Nope, okay. Let's talk about copyright. 
So I want to take a moment to sort of set a, a common understanding as we dive into the specifics. Uh, if you have general con uh, questions, drop in a chat, I'll address them as we go. And any more specific ones related to your project, for example, let's hold it towards the end for the Q&A period so we can have more time to address them. So I've already thrown out these three terms, copyright, IP, and licensing. And uh, let's take a moment to clarify those. So everything that we're talking about today falls under the umbrella of intellectual property rights or IP rights. There are four main types of IP rights that you are probably familiar with, copyright, trademarks, patents, and industrial design. And all of this falls under the broader umbrella of IP rights. And there's many other types as well, just highlighting these four. Um, and it's intellectual property is what you create, invent, or develop as a result of your intellectual activity. And IP is valuable, and just like other types of property, you own, it comes with legal rights. So there are legal rights for the creator for having done this work. Um, you can uh, take a look at the Canadian Intellectual Property Office, Office if you wanted to know more specifics of the other types of intellectual property rights that are available. But let's start by talking copyright. So this is probably what most creators are already somewhat familiar with. And copyright is a set of exclusive rights granted to creators of an original work to copy, to share, to adapt, or otherwise use their work. And for us in Canada, the main uh, legislation is the Copyright Act. So let's talk about, now that we know what it is briefly, what does it cover? So there are two main conditions for copyright to apply in Canada. First is that it is tangible or fixed in format, meaning that it has been written down, saved digitally, painted, recorded, in some way made tangible. And also copyright applies when there is original authorship. So this means that it's not a copy of anything, but an original expression. And that is like the expression part is really important as well. Um, so this is the basis for copyright in Canada. There are similarities with other countries as well, especially due to treaty countries and the Berne Convention, for example. Copyright is automatic, meaning that uh, once it fulfills these two conditions, it does automatically apply. You don't have to do anything special for copyright to exist. It's part of your rights as a creator. There is a process for registering your copyright if you should want to. It's really mostly relevant if you want to have a certificate issued by that Canadian um, intellectual property office and to you and some folks like it because it can be used as evidence in court. Um, but just so you know, it is automatic. You do not need to do anything else special aside from having created your original work. In Canada, copyrights, uh, well, in everywhere, like copyrights are not forever. Uh, there's always sort of a balance between the rights of the creator and the rights of the public and the user. And uh, in and so for copyrights, uh, they expire. The expiry date is different between countries. Uh, in Canada, the copyright lasts 50 years after the lifetime of the last living creator. So that's what's on the screen right there. Um, and this applies even if the copyright has been reassigned to an employer or other entity. And after the copyright term expires, that work then enters the public domain and is for, uh, available for free access and use by the public. Now we know what it covers, now we know what it is and how long it is. Let's talk a little bit about who owns the copyright. So as mentioned just a second ago, that copyright lies in the hands of the creators. So that's single or multiple and it's equally distributed. There are scenarios in which it might, uh, this, some of the copyright aspects might be transferred. Most commonly is if it's transferred, the economic rights usually is transferred as part of an employment contract. So many of us who are staff at an organization may have it as part of our employment contracts that our economic rights for anything that we create is, uh, is uh, signed as and transferred over to the employing organization. Uh, however, the moral rights still remain with the creator and this protects the creator from the work being modified in any way that is damaging to the creator's reputation. So see how with copyright, there is like different level of rights that are being protected here. And so now let's talk a little bit about licenses, which is sort of the last main section for setting the foundation. So this is, uh, licenses are simply a legal tool or mechanism, um, and it will usually cover three aspects, broadly speaking. It will cover the ownership of the licensed object, the permissible users of the licensed object, and the permissible uses of the licensed object. 
really telling you who can use it, what can they do with it, how can they use it. So those are the core aspects for how somebody can engage with a copyrighted work. I'm going to take a moment, check the chat, see if there's anything there. Not seeing any questions, let's move on to your BLS related responsibilities and requirements. So as a reminder, the VLS built on three principles uh, to be collaborative, learner driven and digital by design. Ultimately, the VLS is meant to facilitate broad access to content either across Ontario or uh, regionally that is sort of within the Ontario's post-secondary system or globally. Excuse me. And these principles should guide your selection of a license. Now, the licensing requirements uh, for VLS outputs are the legal mechanisms with which eCampus Ontario supports the distribution and access to the resources you've been all working so hard to create. And the portal for distribution and access is the open library. Let's talk a little bit about the key terms as it relates to your VLS based rights and responsibility. The things I want to take a moment to clarify is that the license, the legal tool that we've been talking about, um, here is just a way for us to engage and distribute uh, the users and you as creators hold the copyrights to your content. It's very clear in the funding agreement and the selecting the license is again, just a, a tool for all of us to use to engage with the potential users. Also, uh, the, the license that you're applying and choosing for your VLS uh, project is non-exclusive, uh, meaning that the copyright holders yourselves are granting eCampus uh, Ontario a non-exclusive right to distribute. So that means that as creators, you still have full rights to engage in other licensing agreements, et cetera, as you desire based on what you would like to do with your resources. And finally, it's perpetual. Um, the license that you choose lasts the duration of the copyright term. And for folks who are, who are just joining us, you might already be familiar, but the copyright term in Canada is the lifetime of the creators plus 50 years. And it, so that is, so those are the key aspects. So the, there is a license that you're choosing that tells us how we can um, distribute and make content accessible. It is non-exclusive, meaning that you still hold all the rights to decide what you want to do with the resources and enter other licensing agreements, but it is perpetual, meaning that this license that you're applying lasts the duration of the copyright term um, so that the eCampus Ontario can continue to distribute and share your work. So you have rights as creators, of course, as mentioned, um, your copyright is protected as part of your engagement with VLS. It's, it's noted in the, um, the funding agreement that's written down. And as you see from that long list of other intellectual properties that are not uh, explicitly covered, uh, those are the aspects that, that, that is not um, covered through the funding agreement, basically. You retain copyright though and uh, control intellectual property rights in control of your content and anything specific to if you want to apply for patents or trademarks and things like that, that is outside of the purview of your relationship with eCampus Ontario. But you also have responsibilities as creators. Uh, for us, this means that uh, the license that you select for your project outputs must be clearly marked on all of your project deliverables. This is really to your benefit as well as the benefit of the users. If you think about it, somebody who downloads your resources from the open library, um, it makes it really easy for them to understand what uses are allowed if the license is clearly marked on all of your deliverables. Um, you also must indicate the license is applicable when you're submitting your project deliverables to the open library. Uh, you will see, for those who went through round one, we will have noticed that there was a drop down menus for you to select the license. And those who've been working with us will know that that open library, if we find that information is not clear, we do reach out and engage with you in discussion about what license you want to use. So this is a really important part of how information is shared and what is, is accessible through the open library. And finally, your, the other set of your responsibility is that you must apply with all applicable laws, including, here's just a couple of the ones I pulled out, which is the Copyright Act of Canada, and as well as AODA. I'm sure you're all very familiar with this aspect. The, the, the nitty gritty details are in your funding agreements, if you're ever unsure. 
Uh, and for the applicable laws, that does mean that you are responsible for applying and obtaining for any copyright permissions, licenses, or any other rights related to the creation of the project deliverables. Let me just check. So we're gonna talk a little about your licensing options. I'm just gonna check the chat real quick. Still good. I guess I'm being very clear. All right, so let's talk about the licensing options that you might choose to buy. So the VLS funding agreements do specifically mention three commons type licenses. So that's Ontario Commons license, Ontario's Commons license, no derivative derivatives and the Creative Commons licenses. We're going to start by looking at the Ontario Common licenses, which are these more restricted licenses. And the restricted aspect for the Ontario Commons licenses has to do with who are identified as permissible users. The Ontario Common licenses identifies permissible users as members of Ontario's public post-secondary educational institutions. So those are staff, faculty, learners. And the Ontario Commons license allow these users to copy the work, to adapt the work, uh, so long as the original authors are created, uh, credited, sorry, so long as you credit the original authors and that you use that work as part of a publicly offered credit or non-credit program. Let's see, and the main difference between the Ontario Commons license and the non-derivative one is that with the non-derivatives, you cannot adapt the work. The work is, must be used as is. And we re recommend the non-derivatives ones to be used sort of on case by case and to be really considerate of it because it's a much more restrictive license. However, there's definitely scenarios in which that is preferred, such as when traditional knowledge is being used. And so we want to be protecting that knowledge from being taken out of context. An excellent example. Now, as mentioned, we also allow uh, Creative Commons licenses. Um, these are much more open access licenses. A lot of folks who are engaged with open are already very familiar with it. Uh, the Creative Commons licenses are a form of standardized open licenses that allows for easy reading uh, of the license conditions without the licensor writing you, writing a full new uh, legal document every time. And that's sort of the goal of the Ontario's Commons license, right? It's like a mechanism, a tool that's established so that the user and yourself know what is already allowable. And Creative Commons licenses are pretty popular in um, open with in the open movement and for folks who already engage in and make uh, OERs, open educational resources. They allow the user, the creator to choose a license that suits their needs. And it allows the creator to retain the rights they want to retain while still licensing the uses that they feel comfortable with. We had, there is a tool from the creativecommons.org. Uh, I'm just gonna drop that link in our chat. Uh, I find it pretty useful. I think it's a pretty good tool for helping you think through what are the conditions that you think are relevant to you. Uh, you will find on that link that there is also a beta that's available. I actually think the beta might be slightly better, but so I leave it to you to explore to see which one makes the most sense to you. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about those main features of Creative Commons license now to give you that foundation. So it has to do with the uh, has to do with the licensing components. So that we talked about earlier, which is who owns the work, who can use it, and what can you do with it. For creative license, the main features that uh, are part of their license are the ones that you see on the screen, which has to do with attribution, which means crediting the creators. Non-commercial, which has to do with do you allow commercial uses of the content or not. Uh, no derivatives, again, that has to do with allowing adaptations and share alike, which has to do with applying the same sharing license uh, if you're making uh, derivatives or adaptations or remixes of a work. Now here we have a list of all the Creative Commons licenses from most open at the top of that list, uh, which is CCBY to the most restrictive, which is at the bottom, which is CCBY non-commercial share alike. You can see how each of those four uh, components earlier um, uh, are combined in different combinations that has different types of conditions on the use. I recommend watching the OER and you recording that uh, our lovely library coordinator theory had uh, made earlier in end of August. Uh, we can drop a link to that uh, for that recording. That'd be really great. 
Um, and she goes through in detail all of these different aspects. I mean, the slide for this will be available to you, so you can also digest it at a later time. Uh, but it's a really great session for thinking through and, and understanding what all of those uh, features mean. So I want to take a second and acknowledge that, especially since with the second round of funding, we have uh, some more specific work on XR. You may also find yourself using open license software licenses as opposed to Creative Commons or OCO. Those two are explicitly mentioned in your funding agreements, but there is room for other open licenses that are applicable. So I just want to take a moment to bring to your great attention that there are uh, folks who might choose to use the GNU, GNU, I, I never know how to say this, uh, the, the software licenses. Uh, it, we have a link available as well on the slides and in the chat if you want to take a look at it more. There is a license specific for the software as well as a license for documentation on the software to be shared and used widely. So overall, when you're trying to decide what license to apply to your resource, here are the core questions. Uh, what license category is most appropriate for the format of the resource? Who do I want to allow to use the resource? And what uses do I feel comfortable with? Again, uh, the OER and U workshop is an excellent uh, overview of all of sort of the nitty gritties of Creative Commons in particular but we've drop, been dropping some links um, on sort of ways you can engage with that content in our chat so far. And uh, we're coming into the summary and then we'll be time for, uh, for questions. So in summary, uh, sort of the way that VLS is sort of set out is that you must agree to one of the licenses Ontario Commons is sort of the minimum. Uh, you must provide all the files uh, that you create as resources as part of uh, part of this work, and it does have to have a license applied to it. Again, the creative the Ontario Commons license is the minimum, and then you may of course choose a more global only open uh, license. The Creative Commons is the is one that we are very familiar with, and there might be other uh, licenses that might be applicable. But if you are using anything that's um, not explicitly mentioned, such as the Creative Commons and the Cre and the Ontario Commons one, uh, you, you might want to have a discussion with us, with PMO first, to make sure that we can accommodate this. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> Um, and also, you also have the full rights as copyright owners to engage and use the content uh, and, uh, aside from the license that you're applying to uh, your resources from, with eCampus Ontario. So just so you know, as an overall, you are ultimately the copyright holders. The license is a tool for us, eCampus Ontario, to distribute and engage with your end users um, through the open library. And uh, so, we do want you to be thoughtful about the license that is most applicable to your case. If you, got, if you need guidance, um, the Open Library is happy to give specific guidance in conjunction with the PMO team, depending on what your question is. And as well, some of your institutions have existing copyright offices and uh, scholarly communications uh, uh, libraries as well. And those folks are often very well equipped to give you advice and context to your specific institution and uh, best practices there as well. So we've come up to the end of the core content of the session. Um, we have a lot of time now to do a question and answer period. Uh, I think we will stop the recording here and then we'll talk about the question and answers sort of after this. So if we can maybe stop the recording and then we will get into question and answer period. <laughs>